This is Sasha Chua talking with Bastian and Gary about Emacs. Thank you so much for maintaining org. I'm looking forward to hearing the stories about how you got into Emacs and what are the cool things you're doing with it and where you want to, what, you know, where you want to go with it. So in this kind of podcast, I guess, uh, I, I've been wanting to to show people the people behind Emacs, the people who use it, and give people more yeah. of a sense of what the community is like. So what is your story? How did, how did you get wrapped up into using Emacs in the first place? So uh, first of all, I'm not maintaining uh, org mode anymore. Oh, so, this is what I yeah. get for not reading the release notes. <laughs> yeah, no, the custom. Kasten uh, is in charge uh, now. Again? So he's, okay, she's back. Yeah, again. And I'm uh, really grateful that he accepted to come back. I think it must be quite difficult to make uh, this decision to come back after spending, I don't know, maybe seven years, I guess, he spent uh, wow. uh, on this. Yeah. So I've just spent two years and a half, but that was quite uh, an adventure. <laughs> and uh, and now, he's, now he's back in charge. And uh, this is great. I wanted to go to the 8.0 yes. version. Yes. Because uh, that was longer awaited, and uh, the longer it takes, uh, the more difficult it is to <laughs> make a nice version. <laughs> you know this. And uh, so, and I wanted to thank you for this uh, podcast and uh, video cast because it's great to discover people. So, for example, by looking at the uh, Kasten's video, I discovered about Calc uh, code. <laughs> So I went there and I started uh, studying uh, Calc code and understanding why Gaston was so amazed by, <laughs> by the code and, and the whole machinery. Yeah. So my, my story with Emacs, I started uh, 14 years ago. So that was just before 2000. And uh, I, <clears throat> I was more interested, um, I was studying philosophy and I was bored and wanted to try uh, a new system that, that was just about starting uh, with GNU Linux at the time. Um, there was a, some important book in France called uh, Libres Enfants du Savoir Numérique, uh, which means uh, free children of free culture, wow. something like that. And this book was all about texts from uh, Richard Stallman, mm -hmm. uh, Eric Raymond and so on. So I was really into this and I happened to be also, I had this uh, feeling I wanted to try so I installed uh, Red Hat 5 point something at the time. I remember that. I think that was, uh, you remember that? <laughs> when there was all these uh, problems when you needed to connect the modem because your uh, IBM whatever uh, the, the Red Hat distribution wouldn't uh, recognize the modem, so you had to recompile the kernel and, and all that funny stuff. And uh, and I was taking the train one day, reading this book mm -hmm. about uh, free children and free culture, and uh, a guy just next to me told me, what are you reading? What What, what is this book? Are you interested in Linux? So I said, well, I... I would be interested, but, but I don't have this uh, module for the modem, so I'm stuck. I, I just uh, I screwed up the installation of my, my Windows machine, and, and, and I, now I'm stuck. I don't have the Internet. I have nothing. And he told me, what is your machine? I said, this is this machine? So he said, do this and this and this, and you can connect to the Internet. Wow. So I went back home, and, and it worked. So that was uh, magic, and uh, and the first software, for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, the first software I tried was Emacs, <laughs> and uh, that was the, you know, the dark green background for the 19 version, 19.7 wow. or something. So that's four, what, 14 was years amazed. ago. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like yesterday, but uh, now I, I even have some gray hair, so... <laughs> So that was that was really fun. I love uh, reading documentation, and I think that's why uh, I I got stuck with Emacs because you had everything in, in the same place: documentation and the ability to try stuff and to and to write down text and code and uh, and that's it. That was all about documentation. Was fantastic. So tell me so about. So I, I wasn't okay. a. Go ahead. No, no, sure, continue. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't aware about uh, about man pages uh, 
for the first year, I guess. I, I was just reading the info info pages. So everything about info, I was quite aware, but uh, mind pages I just discovered uh, later on. So that happens what? when you learn uh, by yourself. What's in the like? What's in the man page for Emacs and things like that that isn't in the info page? Because <laughs> most of it is in well, the info. The, the info is uh, both for accessing info documentation and man pages uh, for some of them. Oh, and, uh, didn't know about the man command. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't know. Then someone told me in the conference uh, because there was this uh, this uh, stupid joke about uh, try <clears throat> man woman and oh, yeah, there is yeah. no manual entry for okay so this and then I I tried the the, the woman comment I was interested in what was in this woman uh, comment so that's uh, that's <laughs> part of the the yeah, silly yeah. way you discover stuff when you're not at the university doing scientific uh, discipline I was uh, all my friends were philosophers at the time so I was wow. quite alone except wow. this guy in the train <laughs> That's amazing, and it is it is really funny how much of Emacs you can learn about from jokes. So women is one of you know like, you know like accessing help without men, and then there was some um, you know artist mode and Tetris and all these things that I've also come across just because people yeah. were joking about them. <laughs> yeah, one of my my first creator under Emacs was also kind of a joke. Um, it was just to write down notes and export them to HTML and LaTeX. Yeah. So, and, and because I was so narcissistic, it was called Bastion HTML LaTeX. And this acronym is also BHL, which is the acronym for some uh, philosopher in France. So I thought it would be a, a nice joke to have, but nobody understood it at the time. <laughs> Well, I guess most uh, Emacs users are not uh, well versed in French philosophy. So. <laughs> yeah. No, hopefully not. <laughs> since then, have you encountered um, a lot of other, you know, Emacs users? Since many people are getting into Emacs even outside computers and and uh, and development and system administration for org and things like that, have you started running into lots of org users and Emacs users? Um. I first met the, the, the first uh, real person, org user, uh, in a meeting in France called the Lifehacker meeting. Oh, yeah? Uh, that, it was like two, two years ago, and, and people interested in life hacking. So, as you can imagine, we spent half of the, of the meeting trying to define life hacking. And, uh, <laughs> there, is no, <laughs> there is no good definition. It's, I don't know. I, and, and then I I was I I know a few people there like two or three and there was a bunch of twenty people, so we we were presenting ourselves and uh, when I said I'm contributing to uh, Augmod I I could see the sparkle in the eyes of yeah is that you so that hey so I will <laughs> that was strange because that's the moment when I realized that this tiny little software I was contributing to and with this small community at the time um, then there, there were real people out there and who were really fanatic about it <laughs> even more than me I, I, you know I'm, I'm, not a pro, I'm not a programmer I'm, I'm just trying to learn how to program stuff with uh, Emacs Lisp and uh, that's nearly the, the only language I know I'm, I'm, I'm just a philosopher enjoying learning and, and that stuff so and I could see all these uh, you know strong heavy hackers really deep into org and really passionate about about it I was uh, that was kind of a shock and uh, it was cool because afterwards I felt uh, more important and uh, I, I, I could uh, uh, answer requests by, by these people and and, uh, and that was great Wow. So, so basically, you spent twelve years without ever seeing an Emacs, another Emacs user face to face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so that that explains why I'm so happy to to discuss with you. And uh, I was following your blog since very long. And uh, same for for John and all these people. And uh, and um, and yeah, after this meeting about life hacking, I think that was six months after that, we had the first org camp. Uh, where we were exchanging tricks about org and uh, that was also cool because we were uh, 15 people sitting in the same room for three or four hours and uh, just sh demonstrating the way we were using org and uh, oh, that, that, that awesome. was kind of uh, great. 
Yeah. I've met all kinds of uh, great people with the org. Um, <laughs> You know, and it's, uh, I met Carsten, for example, like uh, two years ago at uh, FOSDEM. Yeah. And um, so we had fun and we met with some uh, other users and, uh, no, it's, it's great. And like 10, 10 days ago, I received some chocolate by uh, Carl Voigt, so hello, Carl. <laughs> and uh, I received some chocolate because he was coming in France and we tried to meet each other. But with, as for some reasons I, I couldn't at the time. So it's great to go to some, some bar and to get some chocolate because uh, you, you try to do something right for, for, yeah. for quite some time. So. Yeah, when I when I went to London for the Emacs conference, at which you weren't there, you know, um, but it was great to meet yeah. all these Emacs people in person and connect with them. So, so it's, uh, the community is but, fantastic. Yeah, I have this feeling that most Emacs users, even if they are computer scientists or researchers or programmers, I have this feeling they are quite alone uh, in their environment. So, I I've, I've, I know I've been alone for so for so long, so many years. But um, apparently, I'm not. The, the, it's not an exception. It's just uh, the usual, you know, mistreatment that Emacs <laughs> users suffers for using uh, the best. Editor out there. And people thinking, oh, you must be crazy. Why are you using is... that? It's so old. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, yeah. So tell me. So um, and yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Please go. I was I was curious because uh, you t you say you're not a programmer. You've definitely got into Emacs Lisp to the extent that you spend some time maintaining org. A, a lot of people find getting into customizing and, and coding for Emacs very intimidating. How did you get started? Um, for uh, first of all, um, I was interested in programming since very long, and uh, when I was a child at uh, ten years old or nine. Uh, we had a computer at home, and my elder brothers uh, used to program. So I started programming in BASIC uh, at, uh, during this time, and it somehow stayed there. Like even when I was studying something else, I was uh, programming the the HP calculator because I, I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> and and I think maybe you know that uh, Carsten wrote a big book with someone else about HP calculation and. Uh, and uh, so when I discovered this, I said, okay, this is where Carsten took all this uh, great sense of uh, usability and, um, okay, so so I was into programming when I was a child and, and I wanted to program a, a Go computer, uh, you know, the game of Go. Yeah. So I, did, I didn't know it was uh, so, such a hard uh, task. <laughs> so I... I started, and uh, it was a way to explore uh, many patterns and so on. So it was very basic, of course, because uh, and um, so it's not as if I'm not a programmer at all. I, I used hey, to learn yeah. some languages, yeah, but I never learned anything about C um, or about Java or the core languages that people know when they study programming. And um, so I started by customizing, as you say. And I think the second step was to, I don't know, um, I really wanted to have uh, this BHL uh, mode because uh, my girlfriend at the time uh, wanted to write in LaTeX, but she didn't want to learn LaTeX. I was not satisfied with Lix. I thought Lix was somehow cool, but that was the very early version of, it, of Lix, was maybe 1.2 or 3, maybe it's better now. And so I wanted to, I thought it should be very straightforward to export into LaTeX, to have a template of a pure uh, freeform text, to export mm -hmm. it to LaTeX uh, if you have some conventions on, on headlines and so on. So I started to, to have this, and I thought the, the manual, the Emacs Lisp introduction, was good enough to write uh, a mode. Oh. And uh, that, that's basically it. And I keep discovering new stuff that, I, I cannot imagine that maybe educated people or people who have studied computer science know better than me about, uh, for example, algorithm complexity. This is something I never studied. I just, I study it when, when someone 
you know, hit my fingers and say, this is a stupid algorithm. It's uh, log uh, square uh, complexities just to stop it. So I say, what does that mean? I, I need to study. So I go and I try to study. And that that's how basically how I get into org itself. It's just, okay, this is a small challenge or more more precisely, this is a challenge I just cannot know if it's hard or easy. Let's go and let's uh, <laughs> pray that it's easy. And half of the time it's just hard and I, I, I continue because otherwise uh, I would feel stupid. So, <laughs> so you, you basically it's, it's, got uh, through the challenge with a lot of determination and stubbornness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I think, you know, uh, my experience as a maintainer, Usually there is a saying that uh, one part is uh, less intelligent than the whole thing. For me, it's worse than that. It's just that one part, uh, me, is less intelligent than each other part, right? In the community, I'm sure I'm, I'm, sure I'm less an expert on LaTeX than 90% of the community. I'm less an expert on HTML5 than 60% of the community. I'm less an expert on algorithm. But first of all, I'm, I try not to claim I'm an expert because obviously I'm not. And I try to stay stubborn in the right way because you can be stubborn in the wrong way. And I, just, uh, and I keep thinking of the users. I keep thinking, okay, who is the philosopher next to me who wants to discover org mode and who doesn't care about this and this but cares about the, the, the software to do the right thing uh, wow. first. Not, uh, yeah. And awesome. um, yeah, now uh, finally, I, I, I th for example, Git. I just learned Git for Emacs and Augment. Um I would have no other incentives to learn uh, uh, DVCS other than Augment and, and that stuff. So I thought, okay, there are many people out there learning this. I should learn it. Maybe it's hard. Maybe it's easy. I don't know. I, I let's see. And um, and that's it. That's great. What else have you been yeah. learning about in terms of Emacs and all that? Um, and how do you learn it? Um, you mean within Emacs, other modules? Yeah, um, for example. Uh, Magit is uh, obviously uh, a module that I've been learning and it's really handy. Uh, just a few comments uh, there. Uh, I've been learning a lot about emails because oh. uh, I thought yeah, see, when you're not a programmer, emails is a nightmare. Like the difference between the MUA, MTA, the way it works, the delivery of emails, what, what are the headers, um, is your client adding new headers to your email or is this the, the M MTA or... So I was interested in this. I thought, I think it's fascinating the whole email business and... Um, because because the the purpose is really simple, right? It's just uh, uh, writing something and sending it uh, over the internet. And the world machinery is complex with all this nice uh, uh, RFC. And so I spent some time reading RFC about emails, about conventions, and I still have a hard time convincing people that mailing lists should be positioned on the sender. Uh, for the reply to mm. uh, header, right? Yeah, Stuff yeah, because like you can, then but, you can uh, choose. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the useless uh, thing I've been learning about, because obviously I will not write uh, a new client. And uh, bash <laughs> like scripting. Five or six. Yeah. Oh yes, bash. Mm-hmm. Cool. Bash scripting and um, and uh, of course uh, Tekafo and uh, and uh, something as it had. Uh, yeah, I, I, I cannot think right now, but uh, processes just uh, hitting, you know, now that there is a process uh, in Emacs and uh, so trying to decipher all this and to understand the world Unix environment or Unix-like environment. My, my entry point is uh, Emacs usually. Yeah. So even I discovered what, what it means to be multi-threaded just because of the discussions on, on Emacs. Mm -hmm. so, and because people were angry that Emacs is uh, single-threaded. But the world notion was completely 
uh, obscure to me uh, before the lively discussion that brings people to fight uh, about something. That's what uh, interests me. Maybe I, I need some uh, emotions or some fights to get interested in something. Otherwise, uh, and also this passion for reading uh, documentation and, and, and books. Yeah, yeah, so it sounds like you read a lot of mailing list messages and, the, you know, and news group discussions to get a sense of what else to learn. Um, yeah. Do you have any particularly, fa you know, uh, do you have any favorite mailing lists that you look at? Um, I'm, there was some uh, problem with the song, Sorry, but I, if I have some mailing list. Yeah. What, what do you like reading then? Where? Okay, now I like reading the closure uh, mailing list. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, there is uh, Phil Hagenberg, yes. and uh, he, he's maintaining uh, Leiningen, and, uh, and I have this feeling there is a rich diversity of people there, and so Phil is a link to Emacs because he's been contributing to Emacs a lot, so I feel home somehow. <laughs> and. Uh, the diversity of uh, contribution to Clojure is quite fascinating mm -hmm. and uh, I also feel home because people are really constructive and uh, there is uh, many, many new software released and I have, uh, there is this uh, nice balance between what I can grasp, croak by just reading the emails and what is completely new to me. So I feel really motivated to learn what is new just by reading one email. I know that mm. in one email there will there will be many implicit implicit references to something that I don't know. For example, the uh, datomic uh, database, or you know, or lock threads and how the the new system work for concurrency. I I don't master concurrency at all, but I just try to feel the concepts for now, and uh, so I enjoy reading this list uh, quite a lot, and. Um, that's basically it. I'm, I'm not really into IRC and um, for the last year I was just reading the Augman mailing list which was uh, quite a uh, high uh, frequency <laughs> of emails. It's, uh, I yes. think the, the average was uh, 40 and, really? and there was a pike. It was one or uh, maybe five days in the last year when we had 120 emails per day. Uh, for five days, or so. so that that was a bit. Uh... Yeah, this this is where I just read it as a news group um, and to, and use Gmail yeah. or something like that, so I don't have to get everything in my mailbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me now, I I use news and yeah. uh, Gmail and Gwyn yes. also. Yes. For everything, so everything is an nice. email, even blog entries. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, that, that, uh, I've. There is a there is a conference right now on the internet. I think it's quite popular, uh, called um, uh, anti bullshit stuff. Or do do you see what I? No, I'm I gonna send gonna... you the link. Yes, yes, do send it. Well, it's a uh, the point is really simple. Is just that the web is now full of stuff that we don't need, and we need to try hard to stop. Uh, you know. Uh, to to focus on some useful stuff and to explain why why we are using this useful stuff. Mm -hmm. So my anti bullshit stuff is news because uh, when I read blog entries through Emacs, it's uh, I don't care about the the visual stuff. I ah. I just see the pictures that people have been deciding. I'm not distracted by anything. And then you can and, use uh, the news scoring to say, yeah, I really don't want to read anything like this again, or I want to read more of this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly, and and scoring scoring against uh, subjects uh, yeah. is really helpful for blog entries, for example, because uh, first you have uh, as many groups as as um, as new blogs or new feeds, and I I don't use virtual groups that much, and uh, but then the, you use scoring and and you can bruise quickly through the through the blog entries. So, so and, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to say that I found out that many people try to fix problems that I never had just because I was using Emacs. <laughs> I've been hesitant about using NNRSS because I wasn't sure what the performance would be like for reading lots and lots of blogs, um, uh, especially since Emacs is single-threaded still. Uh, but So how do you find it? How many blogs do you read with this? 
Um, actually, I don't use uh, NN uh, oh. RSS. I use uh, uh, Gwyn.org. Okay. You know okay. It? So yeah, so you yeah. use that for for that. Oh. Yeah, and then I subscribe to, to the group. So That's and usually faster. I have two modes. Yeah. That's yeah. much faster, I guess. Yeah. So because we're not, you're not checking the RSS each time. It's yeah. just a. Uh... So um, I have two modes for emails. One mode w where this is just a uh, fetch mail. And uh, I've not installed uh, offline uh, IMAP for mm. now, but uh, and Dove codes. But uh, I want to dedicate one day uh, to this in, in the next month. So it's just fetching emails. So my first mode is just checking emails and going inbox zero, uh, like uh, Merlin Man talks, and yeah. I do this every day. And the second mode is when I I activate uh, G uh, Gman and uh, and Gwyn. Uh, um, and then I go check uh, blogs, entries, and uh, mailing lists. Mm. But, so it's very basic email setup, but it works. Right. So uh, you have a primary select, and you have a secondary yeah. select. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's it. And I'm I'm not very disciplined about not checking my emails too often, uh, because I know it's going to be personal emails. And, but I'm disciplined about not checking blog entries too often. Once a day is enough. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you get lost. <laughs> That's Quite awesome. Quickly. So what other ways have you customized your environment? What other things do you do that, that fit the way that you work? <clears throat> okay, so my Emacs, um, let me check what, what's the name of my uh, theme. Um, you can share your screen if you want, although you might have other information there that, you know, uh, can't be seen. Oh, I don't think I do have uh, information about passwords and, and that stuff. Let me remove this quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there are some people okay. who try to keep their Emacs configuration very minimal, but uh, but a lot of people also end up really customizing it to fit them, which is nice. And it's always interesting to hear about how people customize, because then you're like, oh, that's an excellent idea. I want to steal that from my config. <laughs> I think I stand in the middle. I want to keep my my customization uh, minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for this, it was not a deliberate decision. It was uh, something I started because I, I was uh, fed up launching a new Emacs dash Q when I had to test everything. So I wanted to have my minimal setup to check, huh. to quickly check about bugs and so on. Yeah. And then I happened to realize that it's also far easier when you have to work on some machine where you don't have your configuration. So mm -hmm. the, the, the configuration nightmare, I, I tried to solve it by having nearly zero uh, configuration. The first step was to put everything in one file. Uh, the same thing I did when I start when I started using Ogmook. Yeah, yeah. I wanted everything in one file. Yes, it's much easier. So that was that was cool. Yeah, that was before I discovered about grab find in Emacs. So <laughs> now I'm a bit more <laughs> agile and 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 I I allow myself to use more than one file. But uh, at the time I was only using the search uh, facility. So I try to stick to a very simple uh, configuration for this, but I'm not uh, religious about this. And sometimes I just uh, add some stuff just to test a new package, and I forget to clean up my my, my configuration file afterwards. It's a uh, it's no big deal. I think uh, yeah, I'm I'm very liberal about this. Yeah, I'm starting to experiment with using virtual machines to kind of isolate. Development, so I can say, all right, my regular Emacs, I'm going to still be on, you know, e uh, Emacs 24 with a package version of org, but I'll have a virtual machine that's set up with CVS Emacs and CVS org, so at least together. All right. So then I'm it's good. completely separate. Might be something to try. I should, I, I should do that. That that's why I should uh, see more computer scientists, and they have ideas like that that I don't have. Uh, <laughs> Reflex. Do you publish That's, your configuration uh, file anywhere, by the way? Sorry, sorry? Do you publish your configuration file anywhere? Do you share it? No, mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm... Can you be persuaded to I share it? I could share it, I, I think I shared... Um, 
I will I will share it. I will share it. It's a simple uh, configuration file. It's less than uh, 1,000 lines, so <laughs> maybe it's not that simple. But uh, yes, uh, I will share it. I'm looking but, forward to that. You know, half, half of my configuration file is uh, is used by I modules configuration that I don't really use that much, like uh, ERC. Um, I have, uh, I don't know, 20 lines for ERC, but I'm using it once a month or something like that. So, actually, I have two configuration files. I have one for Emacs and one for GNU's because yes. GNU's, otherwise, is the biggest one. Yes. <laughs> and because I find it easier to just to just configure uh, GNU's, and I thought the, this could be the one that I need to transfer on some other machines I, if I want to set up emails mm -hmm. quickly because otherwise I, I don't need it. But yes, I will. I promise. <laughs> so in this thousand line Emacs file and maybe your dot new self, uh, file as well that you will post at, at some point, what are some of the things that you're particularly happy about having customized? So maybe I can share my screen sure. now. I, yes. Let me try this. So is this it? Yes, I can see your screen. So you can see yes, my Emacs screen right now? I can see your right Emacs now. screen. If you zoom in a little bit, then it'll be slightly easier for people to read. Like this? Yes, perfect. Okay. So this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, I use Augstruct. Yeah. Let me see. So this is the part that I use where I, where I use this uh, functionality from org 8.0 mm -hmm. about Augstruck heading prefix we get. Yes. Which um, end with the um, Augstruct mod, which makes it easy to use headlines yes. into comments, and then you can uh, fold and unfold very easily. Mm -hmm. And this is so basically this is my my configuration file. Uh, very <laughs> the modes that I disable or just uh, um, use, yeah, and uh, about the fonts, just monospace mm. 11. I had some stuff I don't use anymore, but <laughs> toggling some, some fonts. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned me the color scheme about... that you're using as well, right? Which color scheme do you use? Yeah. Um, I think, where is it? Yeah, this one is a uh, cypherpunk. Mm. Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is by Sam Aaron. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the creator... Yeah, you you met him uh, yeah, at the Emacs conference, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like uh, this very colorful um, uh, stuff, and the other ones I was using were uh, Zen and Art and Gen Two ish or something. But it's usually a, a, a white on 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 black, and I have this. I don't know if you're gonna see this. Do you see the change? Change. No. Okay, no. Uh, I use uh, Xcalib. Um, this is Xcalib. Oh yeah. You know this small no, utility. No, I haven't looked into this that. Just, this is just um, 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 a tool to invert uh, the the colors quickly. So oh. when I'm when I want to see uh, stuff black on on white, I just press. Uh, a, a key and I have all the colors inverted. Huh. So it's really useful because, for example, if I'm reading some some emails, um, I'm reading some emails on org mode yeah. right now, and um, I want to invert the colors because I find it easier to read. Then I just have this uh, this keystroke, and uh, it's 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 easier because I'm not uh, an, a white and black. Always, uh, I, I find it some, sometimes easier for blog entries and for the web to yeah. write, uh, to read differently. Wonderful! That's that that come really handy. So I don't want to spy too. on. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And also on on GNU's, I have this um, 
So see, this is um, my my email box, and I have this key about uh, showing or uh, mm. hiding uh, some stats about the emails because I find it intrusive and uh, a bit stressful to see <laughs> that uh, I have uh, too many too many emails. So these are the and 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 red emails. I have zero here, oh, okay. and these are the uh, ticked. Emails yes. and these are the dormant, you know, dormant yeah, emails. Yeah. yeah. For example, yeah. So yeah. I use this a lot. Wow. Dormant is my virtual, my virtual to-do list. So. Wow. Uh, I'm here surprised I, you don't I, keep your to-do list in org then. <laughs> that's how. That's how I manage to uh, to uh, keep things uh, quite clean with the org mode list. It's I use this key. A lot about dormant, <laughs> dormant emails, and especially because they show up in the thread That's if true. you if you tick. Mm. So uh, I I try to have uh, less uh, as a, uh, as few emails as possible uh, mm -hmm. on the list. So this is That's cool. This is it. Hey. And um, that's it. And I don't want to see this information all the time. <laughs> I want to I want to hide it. And to believe that I'm doing the inbox zero uh, methodology, <laughs> so that's how I survive. <laughs> and by having, by having calls. Also, I find it useful to just uh, limit uh, to the one level uh, oh, yeah. email. So this, yeah, yeah. so basically, this is my email box when I start my day. It's just uh, this. I focused. don't have the, the the news group and yeah, yeah, and and relaxed because otherwise it's yes. a nightmare. <laughs> I, I cannot imagine another male client that will let you do this kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> so this yeah. is great. Yeah, this is uh this is good. So in um in GNUs uh yeah. I had some uh, function to thought to sort yes. by number. Huh. Uh, I don't use it anymore. I wanted to contribute it to GNUs, but uh, maybe it's not that useful. I wanted to sort uh, by the length oh, of the thread. Oh, right. Because you like learning because from things I, that people are arguing about. <laughs> but yeah, but because uh, while, while maintaining org mode, I wanted to reply first to the one email thread um, ah. because that's easier and because that's uh, more probably uh, a, a nice bug or oh. something like that. And, and then go to the... Because long long threads, I I knew it would be long to read, to read, and long to pass, and long to process, and long to decide. Oh, that's smart. So the size of the. Well, I, I'm I'm not using it because finally I found out that uh, the the chronological order is is uh, good enough because you have to show that you're here. You have to show that you are taking care, and for this, the size uh, the size of the thread doesn't matter that mm -hmm. much. But uh, yeah, maybe I, I'm going to start using it uh, for this. And I wish we could have comments from blog entries in the form of uh, you know green.org uh, RSS feeds. Maybe I should subscribe to some comments feeds. But for now, I wish I could just subscribe to one feed and have also the comments added as uh, messages, as replies oh, yeah. to, a, to a blog. But mm. I think that's uh, too, too much. Uh, that would be a really interesting interface. Machinery. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, that's it. I don't have any fancy, fancy stuff. That sounded pretty fancy, actually. <laughs> I would love it if you posted your your news and your uh, your Emacs configuration, because those sound like really useful hacks. Yeah, I could I could post them. The way I I was uh, navigating in Augment, so this is Org, and I was always using this cold folding facility. And uh, and that was the way I, I, I could survive. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I was doing every day was also, I, I go here, so just let me, let me clean up stuff. Sure. And um, so from here, I was uh, always trying to find a new, you know, a new prefix for some command and was doing this, navigating <laughs> here. Yeah. Going through through the dev custom. 
and uh, fixing mm, things like this. So the grab find is my uh, survival kit. So here I can find there is a patch. Yeah. Here, and also about mana, about managing patches. Yeah. Uh, we were using the patchwork um, uh, stuff. Oh. Uh, why can you? I don't. If I just okay. I'm I gonna go back to this. Yep, sure. Uh, we were using the patchwork. John Weekly was uh, installing it on uh, the server for, for us. And it was nice, uh, but it wouldn't fit into my workflow somehow. Uh, one of the reasons was that the messages, the changelog, were not really neat when you use the patchwork because you have to reformat it and it's not uh, mm. uh, very useful. And also because I didn't like the, um, the automatic message that it sends to the one who submit the patch. Mm -hmm. And uh, something I try to do on, on the augment mailing list is to say hi. On every message I, I send, I say hi Sasha or hi Cast. And, um, and it's not automatic. It's just me taking the time to say hello. So, and, uh, uh, so I have because some, I want yeah. to... Go ahead. Yeah, because I think it's it's important to show that you take the time to say hello, just to be polite and uh, and nice. It's very easy to see uh, half of the fights on the internet starts because you you're not sure that the other one is nice or not. Mm -hmm. But it's so easy to show that you're nice that that it's uh, stupid not to show that you're nice, and that's it. So. Yeah. So, I had um I had some code back when I was using GNU and BBDB, which is a Big Brother database that would either yeah. say hi with like you know whatever name it could find, or it could it would use custom highs depending on what's in the the person's contact record. So for example, yeah. you know I'd ne I would never address my mom as hi first name, you know. So she gets in, yeah. in her BBDB <laughs> record, hi mom, <laughs> and that, that's what GNU uses whenever I reply to her. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I played with this uh, with this uh, module. So I use BBDB a lot. I'm still using the two version because it's uh, good enough for me. And and uh, I I tried this module, but then I thought it's stupid. The, the time you you need to say hi, it means that I've taken you know even for the signature. Sometimes you see uh, best results, and you know it's automatic signature. So sometimes I say cheers, sometimes I say best we got, but I try to mean it somehow. So yes, I, that's, that's the same for I. That is good. That is very and, nice um, of you. So, well, I, I'm not doing just for me. I'm, I'm doing just to make sure that all the people on the list understand that it would be nice to say hi and just to take care yeah. of people there because every, everyone is using his free time. And um, yeah. so for the patchwork, I thought sometimes the automatic messages they are fine. I mean, it's useful to have these uh, this, uh, notifications. It's just notifications. Nobody gets hurt. But uh, the world system was uh, too rigid for me, so I started having um, a manual uh, a directory where I could put all the patches and then create a, ta a task in Ogma to review the patch or to apply it uh, <laughs> quickly. So that's it. That's, that's and, um, easy. Yeah. Huh. So, so it would automatically create the org entries, and then you would just add that file to your agenda, uh, your agenda files, and work with that from there. Yeah, uh, let me show you. I don't have this anymore, uh, but I used to have. Um, so org capture. Yeah. I used to have, so this is basically my all capture stuff, everything looks the same and I, I try to uh, keep the date when I capture stuff because I oh. hope I'm going to use this date somehow, uh, but I don't use it Oh, you can, you, can, you can analyze it to see how long it takes from the time you thought of something to the time you finished it. Yeah, that was when I used to have this, um, uh, I used to, to write org registry. Mm. And uh, an org expiry, and after some after two hundred uh, days, for example, you would have org oh, expiry yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, telling you you need to expire this this yeah. task. And here is um, huh. so let me uncomment this so that it's more readable. 
I have this C. So when I had a patch to store, I I I was um, storing it under the headline mailing list, mm -hmm. and uh, there was uh, just a tag patch. So I was just then looking for patches, and patch have a next and a priority action, and what is about uh, and bugs have. Uh, only two, so I think it should be a next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So that, that's, yeah, that, that's it, and that's what I was uh, using for managing patches. I thought it would it, it was a lot easier than just to review uh, the patch rate. The patch rate was uh, was great when the, to 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 make sure that n nothing was overlooked. Yeah. Means that. Maybe my, my system, uh, I would review patches, but for some reason I, I could miss something. Then I could go to the patchwork and see, okay, this is in the patchwork for so long and, and somebody said he wants to take care of this and, uh, and we never uh, processed this, this bug. So it was good for that, but not for my workflow somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I noticed you seem to be using org to manage your garden too. <laughs> Oh, How does that now work? this is because, okay, let me, okay, let me go, <laughs> let me go here, all right? So this is because I used to have uh, this metaphor about uh, managing my task uh, as, a, as a house, right? Ah. So in the house, you have the garden, you have the living room, you have the attic, <laughs> and um, you wow. have the basement. Wow. So things that you need to tidy go to the basement, <laughs> right? And in the garden you have you need to play with, and uh, the living wood should be need to show off with or something like that. Or, or current tasks for tomorrow. And the attic is done. Um, I never do this. Some uh, <laughs> souvenirs, right? So I have, oh. I have a big attic actually. So That's I think awesome. the basement is. Yeah, I think the basement is. Um, <laughs> then something like that. And my life stays here in the living room. Yeah. And uh, and here the attic. That's oh, an interesting well, metaphor. Small. Also, it was useful. I'm I'm sticking to this. It doesn't have that much meaning because my basement is too big. I need to tidy too many stuff. But they, there is another another system that I want to try, and I call it Wamuka. Right. Huh. So this is some kind of uh, mantra for want, must, and uh, can. can. Mm. And this is auto. Oh. Yeah. Everything is orthogonal here. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the thing you want, the thing you must, and the thing you can. So yeah, yeah. you first do, depending on your mood, you first do the thing you want and can, for example. <laughs> That's when, when you don't want to work. And uh, for example, work things is must and can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, must then somehow can depending on on, on the the level of uh, <laughs> of what you can. But I thought it would be, and then you could represent this using a cube, right? You have three yeah. dimension. You can take the cube and you can see for one project uh, what is what is what you the the the, the degree of uh, you want. And uh, and you can yeah. so for example you could have um, I don't know here the Wamka would say I want this two on a scale of uh, one to ten and I must do this uh, eight on oh, one to ten and I that's clever I they have it all in one the... right and then you can you can even come up with your own scoring functions that split apart the number and yeah do stuff oh you can yeah yeah, yeah it can be oh. more explicit. <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. And and I think it would be a nice way to sort out the the, the thing I could do depending on my mood, or to know that, uh, or to just try track my habits in terms of okay, I discover I always want to do the thing I cannot do, which <laughs> and the thing I I don't must 
uh, I mustn't do so. That's a great idea. I think I would find something like that. I think I'll experiment so with that. So that. that's basically the two ideas I had. It's just uh, this uh, house metaphor and uh, this uh, Wamka system. I'm glad I asked. Oh, we're getting to the end of the, the time I scheduled. Um, although yeah. if you're free, I'm I'm still free after this too. Uh, are there any other you know parting thoughts? Uh, any important things that I haven't asked you about, or anything that you'd really like to share with other people who will be listening to this? Well, uh, I've not been preparing that uh, <laughs> enough, I guess, to have more ideas. But um, no, I think it's great to have these uh, ongoing conversations with uh, with everyone on on video and to have this long video when you need to put a log task to say okay it's one hour long so I need to have the task for one hour uh, <laughs> playing with uh, new uh, Emacs people. I have a long list of Emacs wishes for example I would like to be able uh, to have multiple regions so multiple regions yeah 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 well, multiple like cursors to... and um, so, IELM are starting to go, go that way so there's that yeah, and uh, rectangles of uh, the same rectangles yeah. that you have for uh, VI or Vim. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a Vim user. I use Vim. I I completely agree with what you say in, your, in the last blog entry about learning uh, all the tools because uh, because that's good for uh, your social karma, right? And to to show that you're liberal about uh, and that it's not about computers but about people. <laughs> so. I'm a Vim user, and I've been impressed by uh, by the rectangle uh, mode and and the visual rectangles that you, that the stuff that you could do. And I've been participating to a Vim comp, and people were using Augment <laughs> there. They were opening a, a Nimax buffer just to have the tables. <laughs> so they were displaying org tables within Vim buffers. And I think it tells a lot about uh, who is the best editor. <laughs> I don't know. That's <laughs> awesome. To end with some uh, provocating. Uh, <laughs> well, thinking. thank you so much. It was an absolutely del thank you know, you delightful you. to chat with you. All right. Yeah, very nice. And uh, thank you again. All right. Thank you bye again. Bye-bye, <laughs>